Modernising the Disability Service at Solent University. The presenters today are me, Alexandra Banks, Deputy Head of Student Experience for Achievement, and my colleague Becky Harris, who is the Disability Advice Team Leader um, in Access Solent, our disability service. Solent University is a widening participation university and this year we had approximately 1,600 students who declared um, a disability. So Access Solent is the Disability and Neurodiversity Service at Solent. Uh, we're a central service um, and we offer um, support to students with uh, specific learning difficulties, disabilities and long term health conditions. In January 2019, we decided to complete a really thorough review of the service and to look at our processes, procedures, um, our roles, responsibilities, um, and to compile a development plan um, where we identified the changes that we wanted to make and the steps that were needed to implement them. We identified a number of areas for development within Access Solent. So we want to look at the team structure, roles and responsibilities within the service. We wanted to review our service accommodation and environment, including areas such as the consultation rooms and the waiting area. We wanted to look at staff development within the service and to bring together a programme of staff development. We wanted to look at student transition in and out of university. We wanted to identify processes and efficiencies that could be made within the service. There was a general theme of wanting to align the service as closely as possible to teaching, learning and assessment. We wanted to develop um, communications with students and staff across the university. We identified that reporting and knowledge and understanding of the data to do with the service um, was an area for development. We wanted to develop online information and guidance for students and for staff at the university. And we wanted to see if we could strengthen and extend our collaborative working with schools and services. So as part of developing the disability advisor role in Access Solent, um, we've looked at, over the last few years, looking at having advisors that can support students that come into the service with any declaration. That works really well for us because it means that any student can be seen by any advisor um, and to get the support and advice that they need. We have advisors in the team with diverse experience and skills and that's really positive in terms of supporting students but also supporting each other as colleagues. And we had a focus on training in the team, learning and development, so making sure all of the team um, have a good foundation in skills and knowledge and expertise in different areas. Uh, the team leader role has developed over the last year, 18 months, so we've gone from one team leader to two, and that's been really positive in terms of being able to focus on developing processes and implementing changes in the team. Examples of this including developing the virtual learning environment um, and the VLE and the resources that are available there for students and staff and also the apprentice process. Part of what we focused on over the past year has been our accommodation and facilities in Access Solent. Part of this has been looking at developing a sensory room for students to use, but also staff can access it. Referring to the National Autistic Society guidance, we've received really positive feedback from students and staff about the sensory room. We had a launch event, lots of professional services staff, lots of academics came to this, and that's been a real positive because it means that staff in the university are aware of the resource to be able to recommend it to students and to know where to take them if they need that. We've redeveloped our consultation rooms and the waiting area for students when they're waiting to see Access Solent staff. So we've looked at accessibility, we've looked at 
variety of layouts in different rooms. We've used student artwork in the consultation rooms and in the waiting area, which is really nice to see, having that around um, in the rooms. We've also implemented pink noise machines in each of the consultation rooms and in the waiting areas. That's really helped us with soundproofing, but it's also a calming background noise for students, which we've also received positive feedback for. We've looked at the team office, so we went from being in individual offices to being in one open plan office. That's been another positive change, so it's really helped team working and communication in terms of being able to share knowledge and expertise, discussing cases and just being able to support each other. It's helped with efficiencies in terms of developing processes and things. We're also working with the library to develop and improve the assistive technology provision in the library. So there's currently a room there and we're looking at developing the resources that are in that room and also having that as a calm, quiet space in the library for students to use. Here are some pictures of the sensory room that we have in Access Solent. We have different seating options, so we have a rocking chair, we have comfortable chairs, we have tactile cushions, we have bean bags, um, lots of different plants, uh, different lighting options which is really important for students, including blackout blinds so students can have the room as light or as dark as they wish, turn the lights on and off, including lava lamps so these stay on throughout the day but students can turn them off if they wish. Here are some further pictures of the sensory room. We have student artwork on the walls, so an example of a, a calming lake scene that's in the sensory room which fits in really well. We have books and games and resources for students to use while they're using the room. We have an aromatherapy diffuser. We also have a, a cornered off area in the sensory room if students want more of a confined contained space and um, with uh, cushions and a rug and a bean bag in, which a lot of students tend to find really helpful if they're needing more of a closed off space to be able to relax and to calm down in. So during the last year we've worked a lot on processes and efficiencies within Access Solent. Part of this has meant that we've been able to continue providing a good positive service for students during lockdown and COVID-19 because of some of the things that were developed over the past year. Examples of this include our online SPLD screening. Students can now do the screening online, in their own time, in their own place, at their own pace. They also book a feedback appointment online at a time and a date that is preferable for them. We've also finalised the visual difficulties process. We've linked in the local optometrist. We've been able to finalise a smoother process for students being able to um, explore this additional assessment if that's needed. Something else we've introduced is Access Plus. So this is a way of us being able to monitor students who are vulnerable, who have a high level of support, students who we need to monitor funding for, who we might have a lot of contact with academics and course teams for. That's been positive as a way of having a central way of being able to monitor and review and support these students on a regular basis. We continue to work collaboratively with the library. The library is really good at taking on feedback from students and implementing that feedback promptly and in a positive way. So we work as part of an access group in terms of improving access for students and thinking of ways that the library can be improved for students. This includes, as I mentioned earlier, looking at the assistive technology room in the library and being able to improve that for students. Alignment to teaching, learning and assessment. Like many disability services, our advisors meet with students individually and agree a personalised learning plan with them. The learning plan is then communicated to teaching staff. Because we invest quite a lot of time and effort in these learning plans, we wanted to try and assess and investigate how effective they were. So we spent time interviewing teaching staff from across the university to ask key questions about whether the learning plans actually had impact and how effective they were in facilitating independent learning and also in facilitating the working relationship between the student and the member of staff. 
What we managed to identify was key information that teaching staff wanted and we also managed to identify how they wanted that presented. So we redeveloped our learning plans um, with the result of more concise plans um, that were having more effective um, and that were well received by staff. Communication and reporting. During our review of the service, we identified that we really could extend and develop um, how we communicated with both staff and students. So one of the first things that we did was to begin to produce regular reports and presentations for our teaching, learning and student achievement committee. This meant that we could present our developments, our progress and also data surrounding the service. The aim of this was really to raise the profile of the service and to um, get, gain a greater understanding across the university of the work we were doing, um, the activities and how we were working with students. A second action was that we started giving regular updates to the schools at the university. So this meant that um, team leaders gave presentations at the start of the year um, to managers um, and to whole school team meetings um, to try and develop a closer working relationship with the schools um, so that they could see how we were working um, and to remind them how to work with us closely. Thirdly, we developed a programme of emails to staff and students so that every so often during the year, staff and students received reminders and emails um, that were relevant and pertinent to the time, to that moment in the academic year. Um, and again, the idea was to help facilitate that working relationship between the service and staff and students. Part of what we developed over the past year has been our transition activities, looking at transition in and out of university. For example, we ran successful transition days throughout the year for prospective students, giving them an in-depth day of information about applying for DSA, having input from the accommodation team, looking at having campus tours, meeting academics if that was available, having contact with student ambassadors, so having contact and communication with current students and finding out about their experiences and those students supported the applicants throughout the day, having the chance to have one-to-one -one chats with disability advisors about students' individual needs was really positive. We put on a separate session for parents which worked really well, so it meant that parents had a separate time to be able to ask questions and to make sure that support was going to be in place for their son or daughter, but it also gave the student time to have time to themselves, to mix with their peers and to increase their confidence in that way. A networking lunch worked really well. It meant the parents and the students, the student ambassadors, all came together to make connections with each other before starting university. We also ran smaller days for students with certain declarations, for example, autism, anxiety, and that worked well in terms of having things on a smaller scale, which felt more manageable for students. During COVID and lockdown, we did online events for preparing for university. So we gave them information about what to expect at university, how things were going to be different as an alternative to being on campus. We also ran an event in conjunction with the career service at university about transitioning out of university, looking at the next steps and things that they needed to consider and support that was available, including things like employment, applying for jobs, doing job research, life skills, budgeting, and it's all throughout university preparing the students for transitioning out into independent learning, independent living. Another thing that's helped us to be able to have continuity in the service throughout COVID-19 and lockdown has been our online information and guidance, which we've really worked hard on developing over the last year. So this includes looking at developing resources for students, which includes things like the online screening, information about the DSA process, information about assistive technology and support they can access at the university, an updated area for frequently asked questions that we can constantly keep up to date in response to student queries. We have a series of videos on our VLE 
which includes videos from members of staff in the team giving advice about key processes such as setting up support and about applying for DSA. It's been helpful to provide information to students in a variety of formats. Included on our VLE is also good practice guides and teaching tips for academic staff and that's been well received in terms of being able to provide them with more in-depth information about ways that they can support students in their classes. They have guidance in terms of how to make resources fully accessible and they also link in with the Solent Learning Teaching Institute in terms of digital accessibility. We've introduced some links to online training that academics and professional service staff can do. And we've also had input from a former student who wanted to share her experiences of receiving support at university and her journey throughout university. And we can play this video now. Collaborative working. We decided that to facilitate collaborative working, we started by inviting on a regular basis other departments and services from across the university to our team meetings. We asked them to um, present a briefing to our team about their work and then we tried to identify opportunities where we could work with them um, and add value to the work that they were doing with students. In a similar way, we also started attending other department team meetings to brief them about what we were doing and again open up the discussion about opportunities for collaborative working. We also very actively offered briefings about our service at any um, opportunity, um, any events and activities around the university, either for student applicants or for current students to again promote the service and identify opportunities to work with other staff from across the university. And we also made a concerted effort to make the most of any networking opportunities that arose at the university. Outcomes and impact. We've been quite keen to measure the impact that our changes have um, had on the student experience. Um, and we've tried to gather outcomes and evaluation of the changes that we've made. The first outcome to highlight is that in our first year of the new modernised service, we reduced the disability attainment gap at Solent by 3%. We also tried to gather student feedback from different events that we ran during the year. So, for example, from our transition days, we had some very nice quotes from students. First one, great day, very informative. This provision is invaluable. Other universities need to follow your example. The student care for special needs is excellent, thank you. So we were absolutely delighted with this type of feedback. We also gathered feedback from staff at the university as well. Um, so for example, um, when it came to our new accommodation that we um, showed staff, we um, had one quote that said, access and it looks amazing. The environment reflects the great service provided and our students are incredibly lucky to have the sensory room. I'm so pleased staff can use it too. Next steps. We're very aware that we've got a lot more work to do. One of the things that we want to do is to really embed our Simply Social group, the student-led group for students with ASD. This was developed at just, just before the time that the country went into lockdown. So that will be something that we look to develop in the next academic year and to really embed for our students. We also want to focus on staff development for academic staff. Feedback from academics really suggests that um, they would welcome input in terms of guidance on teaching, learning and assessment um, and how to make this really inclusive for students. So we're going to develop a programme of staff development. We also want to further develop our transition work. This has been an area of really good success and we've had very positive feedback from students. So we feel that this could be developed further um, in terms of transition in and also transition out of the university. Thank you very much for listening.